tarnished uh, uh, since yesterday, I think, the um, controversy surrounding the O'Higgins report involving the leaked uh, transcripts has escalated, uh, particularly given the uh, leaks of a different nature, one to the 6 1 news, um, separate leak of transcripts to the uh, primetime programme. Uh, and uh, extensive leaks in the Irish Examiner again this morning. Um, all fairly damaging, I think, in terms of their revelations, and albeit crying out perhaps for a broader context. But the bottom line is the transcripts are there now for all to see, Tornister. And we can't live in some sort of make believe world that they're not there uh, because they're not officially there. The reality is they're in the public domain. Um, and they do make for, for stark reading that the, um, clearly if you look at you know, instructions at all times were to challenge the motivation and credibility of Sergeant McCabe in relation to the corruption and malpractice allegations. Uh, the judge questions this um, because, and, and, and saying, are you saying because he was motivated by malice or some such motive and that impinges on his integrity. If these are your instructions from the Commissioner, so be it. To which the senior counsel replies, so be it. That is the position, Judge. I mean, this isn't something I am pulling out of the, the sky, Judge, and I mean, I can only act on instructions. And the key point I made to you yesterday is that this needs to be comprehensively and transparently addressed, Tornishta. Uh, it can't be left as it is. I accept it's entirely unsatisfactory where we are now, but we are where we are. Uh, and it may be uncomfortable uh, for, for people, but there are some really stark realities emanating from this, because as I said yesterday, it goes to the core of how whistleblowers are treated, how people who have made um, assertions and allegations in good faith are treated. And the Gearden report was very strong on this aspect of, of, of the case, in quoting all the previous people who were in charge of Baileyborough Station um, for over a decade, all speaking very highly of the integrity, around the integrity and credibility uh, of Sergeant Morris McCabe. And I asked you yesterday <clears throat> whether you had spoken to the Commissioner or not, and you didn't give a, a clear reply, and I think Deputy Adams asked the same question. So can you confirm, did you actually have a meeting with the, the, the Garda Commissioner in relation to this entire issue, with a view to uh, bringing about a mechanism to resolve this in a transparent ma matter? Have you had such a meeting, or will you indicate to the House that you intend to have such a meeting? Um, secondly, <clears throat> up to now it's been said um, that the section of the Act precluded um, by law, any discussion on legal instructions and um, uh, uh, legal submissions. That appeared to change yesterday, insofar as I think you identified it as not so much a question of law, but a question of legal privilege and the waiving of same. That clarity needs to be made absolute. It's my view uh, that then if it's an issue of waiving of legal privilege, that that's an issue or a mechanism that may allow for some way uh, to resolve this uh, fully and wholly. Uh, I did it myself as a minister on one case where allegations were flying around in relation to him, a filiac tribunal, much to the chagrin of a lot of people. I waived legal opinion on that occasion to show that there was no conspiracy on behalf of anybody to do anything. You, and sometimes, conclude, where there are exceptional situations, a, a, what might not be normally considered has to be considered in the interest of getting to the bottom of this and getting uh, the issue resolved. And finally, if I may, can you clarify? In the case of the meeting in the Mullingar in 2008, uh, which Morris McGibb recorded, and if he hadn't recorded, God knows where he'd be, as I said yesterday, are there any issues emanating from that? Has there been any investigation into how all of that came about, which seems to have led to the rather hostile and adversarial manner which the senior counsel representing on Gordish O'Connor and the Garda Commissioner approached the Commission? Vanished, sir. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you, uh, Deputy uh, Martin. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is you know, put on the record of this House uh, what the Commission uh, said about Sergeant McCabe, and I want to quote from it. Some people wrongly and unfairly cast dispersion on Sergeant McCabe's motives. Others were ambivalent about them. Sergeant McCabe acted out of genuine and legitimate concerns, and the Commission unreservedly accepts his bona fides. Sergeant McCabe has shown courage and performed a genuine public service at considerable personal cost. 
For this, he is due the gratitude, not only of the general public, but also of Angarda Shikona. While some of his complaints have not been upheld by this commission, Sergeant McCabe is a man of integrity, whom the public can trust in the exercise of his duty. Assistant Commissioner Byrne told the commission that Sergeant McCabe is regarded as a highly efficient sergeant, competent. This assessment is shared by the commission. So it's important for us to recall that in the context of the discussion here today. And I want to remind the House of what the Garda Commissioner said when she was speaking about, uh, about Sergeant McCabe and the Commission. She said she accepted fully what was said in the uh, Commission investigation about him. So that's the first point I want to make, and we should be clear that the Commissioner uh, absolutely accepts the findings of the uh, investigation in relation uh, to that and is acting on the findings and the recommendations. Um, I did meet with the Garda Commissioner the day before yesterday. I, I was discussing a number of issues with her in relation to the inner city, uh, gangland, and the recommendations in the O'Higgins report, and uh, I understood at that point she hadn't yet issued the statement, uh, but she um, made some of the points that were subsequently uh, in her statement in relation to her accepting of the report and accepting uh, uh, Sergeant McCabe's uh, bona fides and that she had uh, never uh, suggested that malice was, was the motivation. Uh, and I will obviously have ongoing um, discussions uh, with her, uh, and I have no doubt that she will seek to clarify uh, as much as possible the points that you raise uh, in her own in her own uh, interventions. And I want to make the point that there are a number of places where uh, those interventions will be made. And I do want to remind the House in the first instance that we now have in place, uh, with the will of this House, a police authority, an independent police authority with an oversight role in relation to policing. And I have um, forwarded the report uh, to the policing authority and they have indicated publicly that they will be uh, addressing and discussing the O'Higgins report with the Garda Commissioner and I think that's a very appropriate forum because one of the points that was made again and again in this House was that we should have a body with an oversight role. So that's the first point. We'll also have a discussion here in the House uh, next week and the Justice Committee have also indicated they will take this forward. Um, can I say that a number of other areas that you raised questions about um, um, the question of discipline in relation to the Mullingar uh, incident. That was one point I did discuss with the Commissioner uh, when I met her. And of course, as to whether or not uh, they would, uh, the Angarda Shikona would be looking at uh, the Commission report uh, with a view to seeing if there were any implications for discipline. And the Commissioner informed me that they would indeed be looking uh, at it with that perspective, with that lens, and that needed to be, um, that would be followed through by them. So that's the answer to your question in relation to the particular um, incident. Um, let me just say that uh, uh, the other point that you made uh, I think was about uh, evidence and uh, waiving uh, a legal right. Um, I am advised uh, by the attorney that in terms of making a distinction between briefing a legal team, for example, and the evidence, uh, that it can be quite difficult to separate out those two, uh, in fact, and I think common sense would dictate that that is the case as well. Uh, but clearly, um, if the Commissioner saw fit uh, to make further comment, and if, if she was in a legal position to do that, that would be helpful in terms of answering uh, some of the points uh, that you make. And I've no doubt that within the legal constraints uh, that she will say uh, uh, as much as possible uh, when she's questioned in the future in relation uh, to these issues. There is an enormous controversy um, uh, on this issue now, whether we like it or not or whether you like it or not. And I would put it to you that something, uh, some significant intervention has to happen to comprehensively and transparently deal with it. Now, is it your intention, to, for example, to meet with the chairperson of the policing authority, uh, to put it to the policing authority that it's important in terms of accountability, in terms of transforming culture in relation to uh, people who have important uh, points to make and allegations and assertions to make in terms of improving performance ultimately, uh, that they will be protected? Uh, because this is extraordinary when you read the transcripts uh, as, as they are presented. Uh, and I. We, we, we may not be getting the full picture, I acknowledge that, but nonetheless, they make for fairly stark reading in terms of the attitude, because there was a suggestion yesterday that this was inquisitorial, um, but it's clear from the transcripts in the initial phases it was clearly adversarial, <clears throat> in terms of almost an all-out, right-through attack on the credibility and motivation of Sergeant Morris 
um, McCabe, the person making uh, the allegations. Uh, and I would make the point <coughs> that we have moved, it's in, it, important to note that we've moved from a position where it was uh, absolutely not an issue uh, to be discussed, i.e. the legal instructions and the legal submissions, to one where now it's a matter uh, of, 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 of waiving legal privilege, which is a separate issue for being uh, part of the Act. Uh, and I think uh, it shouldn't have taken that long uh, for that to be cleared up. Uh, and, 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 and clarified. But will you be um, seeking a meeting uh, with the policing, um, uh, the chairman of the policing authority, um, to have a comprehensive discussion uh, with a view to working out a mechanism to deal comprehensively with this? Thank you very much, Deputy Martin. Tanishta. Well, to answer your question, I mean, we did um, authorise and develop and establish this new mechanism for accountability with the policing authority. Uh, it's an independent body, and I think that's a point that many members of this House made when we were going through the, the legislation in relation to it. So I don't think it would be right for me uh, to try and prescribe the work of the authority, uh, but I take the point that you made, uh, and I've already said that I'm referring the report to the police authority, and I certainly have no difficulty with having and would be due to have a meeting with the, the chair of the policing authority anyway, and uh, no doubt the fact that this report has been referred to her uh, will, will form part of the, the, the discussion. But it is an independent body, and I want to stress that, and I think you'd recognise that, uh, that they get on with their work, but they have indicated uh, that they will be discussing this report, and I, I do believe that it's the right forum. Having established an independent body, uh, we should allow uh, it to get on with its work. Now, you're quoting and uh, commenting extensively in what are, in fact, uh, illegal transcripts. I, I take the point. They're in the public domain now, uh, but we still don't know the context of them in terms of uh, where they came in the Commission evidence, what preceded them, what followed them. So I, I do want to say this, that the publication of such illegal transcripts, it does in many ways rob the Garda Commissioner of an opportunity to defend her good name. And we do have to make the point that there were 94 other uh, witnesses uh, who also gave evidence, and I made the point yesterday about prote protecting the integrity of the Commission process is very important, because we want people in the future to have confidence in Commissions of Investigation investigations, to have confidence in the fact that they brief their legal teams and that their issues will, will be dealt with in a confidential way. And I will conclude by saying that this Commission uh, heard, had its hearings in private, guaranteed confidentiality to people, and it's now like we are rerunning part of that investigation. And I, it, we're losing sight of the very broad questions in the uh, Commission of Investigation, which indeed need analysis and follow-up, and we must ensure that they are acted upon, and that the criminal investigations that take place in the future are of the standard that the, uh, the Commission uh, has said they need to be. Thank you.